How can a potential solar homeowner determine how many panels they might need to power their home? We are going to be answering this question in today's video. You might notice that when you take a walk around your neighborhood, each home might have a different number of panels, and the number of panels might not be proportional to the size of the home. The reason that is, is because the number of panels that are recommended for your home is directly proportional to the amount of energy that your home consumes throughout the year on an annual basis. Homeowners go solar to offset their electric bill and reduce the amount of electricity that they pull from the grid in order to save money. Therefore, the amount of solar panels that they'll be recommended for their home will be in relation to the amount of energy that they need to offset throughout the year. There will be other factors which will be taken into account, which we will be looking into in a minute. Therefore, I wanna stress again that the number of panels that you're recommended for your home has very little to do with the size of your home and everything to do with your family's energy habits. After being in this industry for a while and designing hundreds and hundreds of residential solar systems, I can tell you from experience that I've seen 4,000 square foot homes that need five kilowatt systems and 2,000 square foot homes that need 10 kilowatt systems. Factors such as air conditioning usage, pool pumps, and just general energy consciousness will play the biggest role in how many kilowatt hours of energy your home consumes throughout the year, which will ultimately determine how many panels you might need for your home. And while I wish I could give you a magic calculator where you could plug in a few numbers and be told exactly what size solar system you need for your home, there are simply too many factors that will come into play to make this accurate. Factors such as how many sunlight hours of year your roof gets, what size wattage panels you use, and what your future energy habits look like will ultimately be what we use to determine how many panels you might need. And now you might be asking, well, how do solar designers take this information and make a judgment themselves? And the answer is that we use software. Solar design softwares have been around for years, and they're what allow designers to put together preliminary solar designs, which assist us in determining how many panels you need for your home. So let's take a look into how it works. Okay, well, we're now here in our solar design software. We can take a look at the, the roof that we've spec'd out. It looks like this homeowner does have a pretty difficult roof, so it did take us a while to design this, but we can now take a look at where panels might be able to go and where panel placement could happen. But the first thing that we do have to do is take a look at this homeowner's consumption. So we'll go over here to consumption, and I do not have an exact bill in front of me, so what we'll do is we'll put in some values as to what exactly that might be. The cool thing about this software is that the first thing is that you don't need to have all of the values. What they're able to do is they're able to look at other homes in the area, and also just homes in general, and kind of take a look into patterns and calculate you know, what your usage might be in the months which you don't have, you know, if that's not available to you. So we'll go back to the design, and take a look at what we're working with. Now, as we can see right here with the Iranians map, um, the optimal place for panels, if we were to place them on the home, would be on this ridge right here. But since this homeowner does have a shed available in the back uh, with a lot of sunlight, that would likely be the best place to work with. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is go over here and insert panels. Now, the cool thing about this is we're able to first look at which panel we're gonna be working with. So let's just say that the Q cell is the panel that we're working with. We will manual place these panels and start placing panels accordingly. Okay, as you can see right here, this is a 4.8 kilowatt system and it is currently only offsetting 60% of the home's energy usage. So we'll have to place more panels. Well, now we've just offset 104% of this home's energy usage with this system. We can turn on the irradiance map and look at what this system might look like. Obviously we can shift this panel, we can shift the system a little bit to the left to center it and it is off and running. So it's pretty simple and uh, that's what we use to determine how many panels you might need. Pretty cool process, huh? I will mention briefly that these design softwares are in most cases not available to homeowners. They cost a significant amount of money to use each month and can be difficult to learn how to use when sculpting roofs and designing systems. While these softwares will ultimately tell us how many panels the home might need, we will still take into account other things which can affect how many panels you would need for your home. And guys, if you are in the process of going solar and you would like a design like this to see how many panels your home might need, or if you're already fielding quotes and you'd like to get a comparison quote to see that you're getting a good deal, feel free to chat with us by clicking the link below this video. It will take you to our website where you can book a call with me or a member of my team, and we can put a design together for you and provide you with some pricing. So now what else might impact how many solar panels you need for your home? Well, first it's important to look at your individual net metering agreement. First and foremost, net metering is the process of the utility provider purchasing excess power which you push back to the grid and giving you credit. Your individual net metering agreement will impact how many panels we use for your home when we look at how much power your system would be potentially sending 
sending back to the grid. Each utility company will vary on the buyback incentives that they offer, and it's important to look at what buyback option you're offered when determining how much power to offset for your home. If you're connected to a utility company that does not offer a competitive buyback, and you're in a regulated market, meaning that you cannot switch between electrical providers, it would be more favorable that you slightly undersize your system so you're not pushing back extra electricity to the grid. If you're looking to pair your system with a backup battery, this would not apply to you, for you can use the battery to power your home during the hours of the day that your system is not producing power. On the other hand, if you're offered a generous net metering agreement, such as one for one, you can size your system at 100% offset or even greater and be credited or even compensated in some instances for that extra power that you're sending back to the grid. Another thing that might impact how many solar panels we determine for your home is the amount of available space on your roof. With solar, the south facing side of your roof will always be the preferred place when placing solar panels. If the southern side is not available due to shading or maybe you just don't want the panels in the front of your home, east or west facing panels will work as well. One tool I recommend checking out is Google Project Sunroof. By putting in your home's address, you will be able to see a calculation as to which areas of your home on your roof will likely receive the most sun throughout the year to give you a gauge as to where the panels could go. Now you might be asking yourself, well, how much power should I offset for my home? If you field the quotes, you've likely found that maybe they varied on how much power they've offset from your home, anywhere from 80 to up to 120%. The answer to the question is really what you choose. If you see yourself in the future increasing your energy usage by possibly adding a heat pump, pool pump, or an EV charger, it is likely a good idea to account for that extra energy by sizing your system slightly higher than 100%. On the other hand, if you're looking to decrease your usage in the future by possibly re-insulating your home, windows, or simply being more energy conscious, then you can choose to offset under 100% of your usage. Again, it's important to communicate with your solar designer and your future energy habits so they can take this information and properly size the system. At the end of the day, there is no magic calculator or equation to determine how many solar panels you might need for your home. If another video or website tells you to use this or that math equation, that will likely only give you a vague prediction that will help you very little. I hope this video was able to educate you in any way and help you as you look to go solar. At this point with my YouTube channel, I'm just looking to grow by providing consistent value. So if you found this video deserving of so, I would appreciate it if you could give it a like so it can reach other people as well as possible possibly subscribing to the channel so you can see future content from us. Again, my name is Jack and I will see you guys next time.